Welcome to this exciting tutorial on edge detection in digital image processing. In this video, we will dive into the fundamentals of edge detection, what is it, why it's crucial in image processing and the techniques behind it. Then we'll take it up a notch with hands-on coding, implementing popular edge detection methods and visualizing the results in real time. Whether you are a beginner or brushing up your skills, this video is packed with insights to get you started with edge detection like a pro. Let's jump right in. First, we'll begin with handling pixels near the edges, which is an important step in processing an image. Then we'll understand what's convolution and how it's performed with different filters. And once we know that, we'll look into what's vertical and horizontal edge detection techniques that exist with the use of convolution filters and we'll end with looking into some of the popular gradient based and Gaussian based edge detection kernels that exist. So let's begin with handling pixel near edges. It's important for uniform filter application. And what when I say this, uh, what I mean is that our filter will be moving with its center on each pixel value. And when it is on the border pixels, um, will have some uncertainties that needs to be dealt with and that is what handling pixel close to boundaries mean. Now to deal with this problem we have a couple of solutions and one of them is to pad the image with zeros. Basically we just add zero pixel value intensities all around the image so that our 3 plus 3 filter or mask can move uh, without any issues on the border values as well. Another solution is to perform a wrap around which is basically spanning the image on a sheet. So essentially what we are doing is on top, on the very first row where we are missing the boundary values, we are adding the last row values. And after the last row where we are missing uh, the boundary values, we are putting the first row values. And likewise on the right, when we are missing the rightmost boundary values, after boundary values, we are putting the first leftmost column values and before first leftmost column, we are putting the values of last column values. So convolution is a crucial operation in image processing. Convolution in digital image processing is performed with filters or kernels. Both are same things. Also, we call them masks. In this example, we have three matrices. The first matrix is the blue matrix which is padded with zeros and is the input matrix. Then we have the moving matrix on top of it, which is three cross three is nothing but the kernel filter or mask, whichever we wish to call it. Then we have a green matrix on the right, which is the output matrix. Now let's understand how we are calculating the output. What we are doing is our kernel has weights basically, which is the bottom right small initial values. So our kernel, this example has, if I read a long row, the values of the kernel are 201, 100 and 011. And then we just multiply the kernel values with the values in the original matrix that it overlaps and sum them up. And that's the output. So for vertical and horizontal edge detection, we have vertical edge kernels and horizontal edge kernels which when perform convolution on top of an input image, bring out the vertical edges and horizontal edges respectively. And this is an example of convolution operation being performed on a six cross six image matrix with a kernel matrix of three cross three. And we have an output matrix of four cross four. Just like that, we have horizontal edge kernels as well. The only difference is that the kernel values of the three cross three kernel we had in the center changes accordingly such that it's able or specialized in detecting horizontal edge intensity values. And then we also have outline and emboss kernels. Now let's have a look of it in real time program. First off, this is the image on which we are going to perform our testing and see the impact of our kernels. And then secondly, the entire code is available on GitHub and the link is in the description of this video. First off, let's begin with our implementation for horizontal edge detection with horizontal edge kernel. So what we are doing is we are loading the image 
on line number five. Then we are resizing the image on line number six. And then we are defining the horizontal edge kernel, just like any matrix as an array of array. And then we are performing convolution using CV2.filter2D. And then we are just displaying the convolved image as the output. So let's see how does our image looks like when we run this program. So as you can see, all the horizontal lines that were on the table are also being uh, highlighted or detected as well as the boundary horizontal lines of the notebook or the book that we have. Just like that, let's run vertical edge kernel.py. The only difference is in the kernel or matrix that we are going to use and rest is same. Let's see what it does to our image. Well, you'll see that only the vertical lines or the boundary of the notebook is being detected. No horizontal lines on the table or the notebook content is being detected. Now, if we want to detect vertical as well as horizontal edges, what we will do is we will perform vertical edge detection, then horizontal edge detection. And then once we have those values, we will merge or combine those two images with an opacity factor of 0 0.5, basically overlapping the vertical edge detection image, edge detected image with the horizontal edge detected image. And as an output, we have both the horizontal be lines being detected as well as the vertical lines being detected. Now let's see what outline kernel does to our image. The only difference is in the values of the kernel. And you'll see that it detects all the outlines with the horizontal vertical or at any degree it it's essentially just detecting the outlines that's what it's designed for with the kind of configuration of the kernel that it has now let's have a look at emboss kernel and again the only difference is in the kernel values now let's run this program to see what impact it creates on our image So this is how the output of an emboss kernel looks like. Let me know in the comments what you think is it's essentially used for, what's the purpose, as its output is quite different from rest of the kernels we just saw. Now let's have a look into gradient-based and Gaussian-based operators. Well, the difference between gradient-based and Gaussian-based is essentially that gradient-based calculates the gradient that is rate of intensity change and the Gaussian based does exactly that but before or after smoothing the image that is reducing the noise and that's the only difference and that smoothing is done using Gaussian smoothing and that's why it's called Gaussian based. Now one of the popular one is Sobel operator from gradient based operator. And what it does is it calculates two kernel outputs and square them and add them and output the root as the final value for the pixel in the output kernel. Right now in this example, it's just doing the sum and it's not the Sobel operator, but you get the idea with this animation, I hope. Another popular gradient based operator is Privet operator. Well, the weights or kernels used in these edge detection operators like Sobel, Privet, uh, even Gaussian, uh, they get their names as a result of mathematical derivations, design considerations, and historical context. For Gaussian-based operators, we have some of the popular ones as Canny Edge Detector and Laplacian of Gaussian. Now let's get back to our computer and see what does the impact of these operators have on our image. So first, let's have a look at the gradient-based operator. The Sobel operator. Now did this detects edge much better than the vertical edge detector or horizontal edge detection kernels and that's really nice but the gradient based operators are in a different league. Let's have a look at canny edge detector. Well the implementation feels like a cheat because we have a canny built in in the CV2 library but it's essentially you can click and understand that it takes in the threshold value as first threshold and second threshold and does the calculation based on that. So more on it uh, on your own. Let's uh, have a look at the impact. 
So this is the impact and you'll see this is much better edge detection if you are looking to detect edge edges with uh, much precision and less noise. Now feel free to explore all the other operators that we have on this code base which is available on GitHub with the link in the description of this video below. But now let's conclude. Well, edge detection is a crucial aspect in image processing. Even in real world, if you talk about dock scanners, the scanners are able to detect the dock because it's able to detect the edges of the dock. So that's edge detection right there in practical world application. Then we talked about methods like how do we detect vertical edges, horizontal edges, and we do it with vertical and horizontal kernels. Then we talked about gradient based and Gaussian based operators and then saw them in action and now as we end this journey i have a challenge for you if you are into coding you'll love this well you are to build an app where the user using it when runs the program gets the choice to select the color from an image or two colors from an image let's say the user selects blue color and then also yellow color from the input image which can be anything as an output you show the shared edge between those two colors in the entire image how do you do that well i have a video on this challenge it's a fun project and with that if i have you excited you are more than welcome to follow along the video and join me and learn how it's done and lastly Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it insightful and helpful. If you did, do drop a thumbs up on this video because that lets me know that you had a good time. Subscribe for more such contents and hope to see you next time very soon with yet another exciting video. Goodbye.